Hello, Scott from Wessex Blades in England here. I'm doing a, um, a sort of quick rundown presentation for a young lad who's asked for an advice on his gear, his list. Okay. Um, obviously, what I'm doing is something that I would deem appropriate because he's under 16. So, as a video response, I'm not banging messages backwards and forwards. Somebody else got any ideas and he's approached you. I would see this as an appropriate way of doing it, okay? Um, I've looked through his his presentation of his kit on his on his floor, um, and so basically this is for Tobes, but anybody who's who's got a, a range of bought camping equipment, there might be something in here that you could glean up as well, okay? So this is for Tobes. Um, you've got a load of little mini gas canisters. The little stove things that you got with a light and a, and, a, and a little burner. You want to keep those gas canisters out in a in a hovel like this, okay, a garage, um, just in case one of them leaks. You don't want that in the house if you can help it, okay. So they'll move out of the house when it runs out. Obviously, adults will be around to so that you take the old one off. And when you drive the new one on, it's it's in, and as it starts to hiss, as the needle starts puncturing, get your dad or your uncle or your guardian, whatever it is, to try to drive that thing up and do it first. But before you put it on, you've checked the washer. And there's loads of things, right? So get an adult to help you, so you've got that off pat. You wouldn't have the burner in your tent and all the little things like that because if it flares up, your tent's gone and you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. So, great bit of kit, but they've got to be done mostly outside. Um, the sleeping bag that you've got, uh, what I would say is, don't rule out some old school stuff. Now, I, I'm quite a good affiliate for, the, it worked in the old days of Pioneers. It'll still work now, but it'll be heavier. Obviously, if you're not that big, you don't want to lump this way. But don't rule out, if if one of your old um, relatives has got an old wool blanket, don't rule it out, okay? Because the wool performs differently than the new hollow fiber sleeping bags that you have, okay? The wool likes water. Now, initially, what you, the mind idea would be is it'll soak the water up, okay? And it'll get heavy, okay? But the fiber soaks the water up so there's still the airspace between the fibers that's wool the hollow fiber filled sleeping bag won't soak the water up the water goes in the airspaces between the fibers okay plastic doesn't soak water up the gaps between the plastic fibers do so what that means is the wool blanket could be quite damp from mist okay but it'll still keep you warm. Once a sleeping bag gets wet, it'll suck the heat clean out of you. Okay, so having a wool blanket as well as a sleeping bag doubles your capabilities and gives you options. Okay, one thing I didn't notice you had, and something I would advocate for young kids out and about, is when you sleep they, they wriggle like hell okay I can go to sleep in my shelter under me tarp and I think I'm in, I appreciate where I am and I'll still be in that vague position in the morning okay kids wiggling and it end out you could be half out of your shelter or not it's just because you keep moving all night so those big orange survival bags that you can get if it's going to rain at all in the night and there's a chance you could get wet if you ended up rolling around you put your sleeping bag in the orange blanket just in case you end up in the morning half in and out of your tent or half in and out of your shelter you got the orange bag just to divert the water away from your sleeping bag which would want to soak it up and you'll end up freezing so don't rule out old school wool blankets and if you can get one of those big orange survival bags if you get a night where it could rain you put yourself in the sleeping bag, in the orange bag, just in case you waddle around all night long. Okay. Um, yes, 
you have a lovely little hatchet it looked like a fiberglass handle but you need to somehow get one of these because you're not going to be able to put that in your pack safely if you fall over it'll go through you see mate don't don't go out thinking you can wrap it up in cotton or or something like that you need to get someone who knows how to make a sheath for your thing if you run out of time you'll have to get in contact with me and I'll have to do something for you because you don't want to go out with a knife unless it's in a sheath with a saw unless it folds out of the way or with an axe if you haven't got a mask that goes on the end so you need to somehow figure something out with some leather it's quite simple it's just front a back and a bit of a welt and a, and, a, and a flip over strap and then you know in your mind when it's in your pack if you fall on it you'll, you'll hurt yourself against the metal but it won't cut straight through everything and usually yourself that you've got a really bad cut okay so moving on to the next point would be your first aid kit when you buy first aid kits don't just trust what's in there you need some big heavy ones as well that means you have a massive wound you've got a big fat gauze uh, this is where I would chuck at the idea of a sanitary towel because it's something quick easy and it's own little polythene wrap so it's pretty clean and you open it out and slap it on a nasty wound so some big heavy gauzy big wound uh, pads basically for in case you get stuck and you end up with you've got a tiny little gauze it doesn't do it tiny little gauze but you end up going through four dressings and all you needed was one good one okay so look to ramping up the first aid kit a little bit your cigarette lighters I only bother getting orange or red but you put some inner tube around it some bicycle inner tube like that and you actually set fire to the inner tube I well, should have one on me this is my next point EDC get yourself a little belt pouch we'll get onto that in a minute okay you see that there's bicycle inner tube cut into little sections and that's just because it's you here we go okay it's wet it's raining Okay, it burns when it's slightly wet. That'll burn for five minutes and get your fire going. So wrap an inner tube around your cigarette lighters. That thing. You didn't have much of a whistle as well, so little thing. So moving on. Okay, there. You did have water purification tabs, and you had a cute little bottle like this. Nothing wrong with that. But if you ever use water purification tablets, and as I got from my mate Joe, FPS bloke, okay, he's got um, his CRB as well for, for cadets, so check out FPS bloke. When you use the tabs and you put it in the bottle and you do the thing like that and you shake it up and 20 minutes later you have a drink, when you get back home, and if you might have used it four or five times, wash the hell out of the bottle and the lid because the chemicals in the tablets build up where you haven't washed it out and if you think that you've washed the bottle out gone out done a trip washed the bottle out done a trip, you ain't washed the lid out yet it builds up I've heard someone got very ill once from build up accumulated water purification tablets that they haven't washed the bottle out properly just a little one for you there uh, on water bottles got you have the plastic ones get yourself a nice Stanley Okay, this is the 700 mil. They do a one liter as well. Rather than aluminium, I've got a titanium cup, and I've got a, a string sleeve that all fits in. So, why stainless steel? Less aftertaste with cooking. It's got a wide mouth. You can actually cook your rice in this. Could you imagine that's big enough to get it out? Use a stick. You can get the rice out of that. You can cook your meals. You can cook your char, char cloth. You boil your water all in one thing okay so a metal but stainless steel wide neck flask you stanley's doing a six seven hundred or you get the liters that's that done i know it's heavy but old school 
you know that's, that's a Swedish mess kit you'll land that down to your kids okay so Swedish mess kit look if your fingers too heavy for now which you get a bit taller carry on but don't rule these things out old Nevy still be there years to come again they come in alley or steel I go for steel okay a lot of people that go oh you're out and you're wearing gloves what a sissy <laughs> says I okay inside these these little t fingers here and all inside your palms of your hand is a is a monster great load of tendons cables muscles nerves you've seen Terminator 2 when he cuts his arm open all those little cables are going backwards and forwards you need to protect them get yourself some work gloves and all those people who say ah you're a wuss <laughs> you just gotta blank them okay because if you get an injury in your hand if you get an injury in your hand you'll never be the same again protect your hands okay for a set of 10 pound little lever work gloves the day you end up you you cut through the gloves and before that save me hand but man will it be ever worth it all right so some work gloves edc okay now i've got i've already seen this because i've advocated it enough the little max position m2 i've seen one of these in coyote tan 20 quid 20 quid okay on amazon so if you wanted a decent birthday present get one of them and it just pops on the side of your pack or you chuck it in your school bag obviously you're gonna have a, a whistle and uh bits and bobs and a bit of paracord but you ain't gonna take your knife to schools are you all right um so you know a bit of first aid a little piezo little mini torch that sort of thing survival blanket so you haven't got to take a whole kit out with you anytime you've always got some little little mini survival tin with you all the time that you're out you'll be surprised what you'll actually use okay so i say i've seen my name for 20 quid i ain't look back 20 pound on this max edition all right uh, one thing I didn't see that you had was a multi-tool. Now we get into a real grey area here. Here's me, 41, looks in school. I'm advocating uh, blades. You've already got blades. You've already got an axe. You've already got a folding saw. What you didn't see you had was a multi-tool. What I did see you had was a couple of bare grill things. They get to be a bit hokey-cokey. I have got, I haven't done a review on it yet, this £10 fire steel with a whistle, okay, and it works pretty good, pretty good, not brilliant, see what I mean, it works pretty good, what you want to do is get very good, okay, so I, if you're going to get a multi-tool, personally, I'd stick with Leverman Swiss Tool or they do some decent Gerbers okay the Bear grill stuff I wouldn't I wouldn't go for that unless it's a really good deal and you get one for like 20 quid okay but, uh, and it's like it's one of those things if you buy a good one now you still have it in 20 years you take it to college you say you pass it down to your kids if you buy a hokey cokey one it breaks in five years and then you're there uh, uh, well, silly get something good now or save up and get something good um, as I say advocating knives I didn't see any fishing gear snares gear sling bow gear catapults air rifles or shotguns I didn't see any of that so I'm not going to pay, pass any comment on that other than saying there's loads of videos out there I didn't see much of this you haven't got to necessarily buy olive drab paracord the cheapy crappy stuff you buy in the millets and all the rest of it I'll get it when it's half price okay I'll pay one pound fifty for that not three quid but when it comes to the real stuff I get this from wild elk there's a, there's a plug for them that's high vis orange and high vis yellow put stuff on the ground you can see it um, so a decent load of paracord don't rule out old school practice your craft 
okay use your tools know your tools nothing wrong getting yourself one of these practicing in the back garden so that is a first an old school steel and a bit of flint okay so you can practice your char cloth so don't rely the old school stuff uh, your friction fire and things like that and the last shot across the bows I didn't see one of these uh, my thought on that is remember sliced bread pneumatic tires petrol massive things like this that there was life before it it came along and then there was life after it for me there was life before Shamaz and after it I very rarely go anywhere without a Shamaz okay it's just the multi-use item keeps your neck warm I wear one of these at work all the time when I'm doing shelf stacking at Tesco's ask anybody I work with I got the small one these are the sort of small ones wrapped up right quite that big okay it's small and it's thin they're about a fiver these bigger ones okay three by three they're, they're in all the camping shops the proper big ones okay but you won't be able to wrap it up so small that fits in a pocket that doesn't see the difference in size so as you say you, you ain't that big yet so just get one of them they're all cotton anyway um it's just if you were laying your, your kit out and you didn't want to lose it in the ground okay you just literally just lay it out on the floor uh you and your girlfriend are out and and the seat's cold on at mcdonald's you just lay that down and be a gentleman it's just it never ends the different uses you can get for a shamar okay so i get one of them but other than that any more little things i can think of i'll pass you away uh, but this is my little VR. So a young kid looking for some info. Scott from Wessex Blades. For tubes and on. All the best. See you on the next one.